right now we're going to get down low. We're talking about ground covers, native ground covers that will really perform here in Central Texas and beyond. I'm joined by our friend Andrea DeLongamaya from Hello. the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. Hi. It's always great to see you. Thank you. Me and too. Uh, we are going to be exploring things that are great alternatives to turf and lots of other kind of useful scenarios for these plants. But I want to start off with that turf angle, okay? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have problems with grass or they just w want something different or a different approach. And there are some native sedges, which are grass-like. Yeah. Maybe we'll fool the homeowners association. <laughs> 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 that, but they really perform and, yeah. and in a lot of conditions. I'm holding one. This is a Texas sedge, and I love the color Isn't of this plant. Cute? Yeah. It's, yeah. That's one. Uh, it's a really good plant for um, a fairly shady garden or mm -hmm. even part sun. I've seen it in full sun and would do okay as long as the soils are deep enough and you get enough moisture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it makes a nice, just even ground cover. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not that even. It's kind of clumpy, and I think that's one of the things to keep in mind. Right. I like to use it instead of monkey grass because it has that, you know, that clumpy look. So you can yeah, use it to right. line a bed or a sidewalk or something. Mm -hmm. um, Much and more it has that beautiful, yeah, that bright green color to it. And then yeah. they bloom this time of year. Good garden soil would be great, but mm -hmm. they're not too picky. You know? but yeah, they're not too picky. And yeah, it, good drainage is probably yeah. the most critical thing for that one. Sun to shade, but not too dark, right? Not too dark, not yeah. too sunny. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere so in the middle, because I middle. Yeah. Happy middle. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> another one you brought, another sedge, I should say, uh, and this is called Creek Sedge, and this has got that, a really kind of bold texture, and yeah. I can imagine this would be a lot of fun in a kind of, again, clumpy setting. Yeah, they get taller than the Texas sedge, uh -huh. very similar conditions. This one, creek sedge, um, will tolerate more moisture. So if mm -hmm. it's a soggier right. situation, it's going to be fine. It'll grow along a creek side or a pond. Mm -hmm. And both of those are also really nice accent plants and containers, too. So yes. even though we're talking about ground covers, you can use them in different ways. I know. We're sitting here talking about them as ground covers, and I'm, I'm in the back of my head, I'm thinking, that would look good in a pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, creek sedge, mm -hmm. and as the name implies, a little moisture is appreciated. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming because it's a riparian plant, that a little shade as well is kind of shade ideal. Shade or, or sun. It's similar oh, okay. to the Texas sedge. Okay. Yeah, as long as it doesn't dry out too much, cool. it should be all right. We have some other grass here. This is bluegrass. And yeah. this is a true grass, not a sedge. Right. And yep. uh, uh, this this can be very dramatic when it's big. I love the look. It is very pretty. That's the Texas bluegrass, which is one of the few grasses that will make a really dense mat in the mm -hmm. shade. It's mm -hmm. one of the sh few that will do well in shade. Um, there are male and female plants. Um, so if you wanted them to reseed, you need to set up a date with both. <laughs> um, but they spread, prop they propagate vegetatively, so you can see how it's kind of, right, you know, right. the clump will just get bigger yeah, and bigger. Right. There's got to be a rhizome under there somewhere mm -hmm. that's spreading out. It yeah. has this beautiful silky um, wave to it, which yeah, is very it pretty. Right, right. And uh, when the sun hits it right, the coloration could be really beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so, um, and how tall would this get? So when they're blooming, they might get two feet mm -hmm. tall, and the rest of the year they're more like a foot tall, just the, uh -huh. more the foliage. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you mow it? I've not tried mowing it, but I would think that you could mow it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's actively growing more in the cool season. In the mm -hmm. spring, it's blooming now. Okay. So if you were going to mow it, I'd probably do it after it's done in okay. the spring, like going into summer. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. give it a little haircut at that time. Mm -hmm. And right. I would mow it high. We have so many salvias we could always talk about, but this is a good one, again, for that kind of semi-shade to shade mm -hmm. se setting. Lyre leaf sage. Yes, and I always like to spell it for people. It's L Y R E, not L A I R. <laughs> You're a darn liar. <laughs> um, and that's that's a wonderful shade plant. They're clumps. Each plant is a little rosette. Yeah. But they seed out very readily. Yeah. Um, and so they'll make a really nice dense ground cover. And then they bloom in the spring. With it's just yeah, it's getting good. started here, yeah. and it'll have a sky blue flower that's maybe about a foot tall when it's blooming. Yeah, it's an attractive little flower. Classic salvia look. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the foliage is variegated as well. Yeah, they have these beautiful dark purple splotches on them, especially yeah. in the winter when they're yeah. close to the ground and it's cold. Yeah. It looks a lot maybe like um, um, a, a juga that uh, yeah, it's not right. native, that right. likes a lot of water. It looks very similar, but this is a little hardier. Yeah, part. I think that's a really good comparison. And, you know, for those people who like the look of a juga, which is a common garden mm -hmm. plant, Here's a great native alternative great for you. Great foliage plant. Yeah. Is it a pollinator plant as yeah, well? Yeah. Okay, Bees great. love to come to yeah, it and some perfect. of the butterflies too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's a sh good shade woodland kind of ground cover. Okay. Um, 
Well, love, love lyre leaf sage, and, um, and I also happen to really love violets. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> there are so wild sweet. violets in the, in the neighborhood where I grew up in, in upstate New York, and uh, I always thought they were very special. You'd see them in those little hidden places, mm -hmm. you know, typically, you know. And uh, this is one that's, is this, is this? The Missouri, Missouri Violet or Wood Violet? Missouri violets? Violet or Wood Violet, okay. And they bloom in the spring. Um, mm -hmm. They are also great foliage plants in the winter. They're evergreen all winter. Mm -hmm. Depending on your conditions, they might kind of die back a little bit in the summer. Yeah. If you have deeper, richer soils and moisture, it'll be nice mm -hmm. and lush through the summer also. Another plant that seeds out readily. So, yeah. you know, you just plant a few and then the seedlings will fill in all the gaps. You know, you say plant a few, I'd like to give people an idea of like how many, if they want coverage, so mm -hmm. to say. Would you plant these on like one foot centers? Would that work? In you terms could do of them closer in? if you wanted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, you know, the farther apart they are, the longer it'll take for them to colonize, right. but eventually they will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you can, I, you know, I can see. Um, Mixing all these different things we're talking about this with some sedge for example. Oh, yeah, that would batches, be beautiful You know sedges mixed with the violets would be great. Yeah, yeah. and well, you can eat the flowers, too okay. Which is kind of a little perk. Okay. All right <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave them for the be birds and bees probably okay now Evening primrose. I know I know <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing because it's a tad aggressive the tad <laughs> right, but um, th there's a Aggressive could be a very good that thing. That may be just what you need. Exactly. Yeah, in the right, right situation. Right. You've seen it on the highway oh, with yeah. the beautiful baby pink flowers on yeah. them. They're very pretty, oh but very gosh, aggressive yes. in a garden. Yeah. I don't recommend planting them as an ornamental plant in a garden bed because they just spread like crazy unless mm -hmm. you really know what you're doing. And Yeah. Um, but if you're looking a for a ground cover. That'd be perfect. For yeah, it. if you have the right place. If yeah. you really want it to fill in, it will do that. And yeah. it sends seeds out, but also it'll just colonize um, mm -hmm. The clump will just get bigger and bigger. Hardy as it can be, mm -hmm. too. And mm -hmm. I think, like, full sun to part shade, is mm -hmm. it? Yeah, okay. And they're, they look the best in the winter and spring. They bloom in the spring, and after that, usually trim them back, and then they might start um, growing new foliage at the base. So it's mm -hmm. a little thin in the summertime. Yeah. And I think that's important to be aware of. So I like to plant it with something else that looks good in the summer. Yeah. A nice combination is lantana. The Texas lantana is a great combination because this is blooming through the winter or through the spring and then when it's done the lantana picks up so you can have okay. two different things going at the same time all right well i'm going to pick up a plant here that looks a little this particular specimen looks a little sad but it's a we, little early in the spring for it <laughs> but it, it frog fruit it's a, kind of a funny name but if you see the little fruit on it you get it <laughs> and um a, a really terrific ground cover a lot of people are crazy about it and i've seen it recently where i thought hmm that looks that great. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fabulous ground cover. Mm -hmm. And I think of ground covers, like some of these that have the, the stolons, the above ground stems that root at the mm -hmm. nodes, make a really dense ground cover that you can walk on. Some of these other things aren't going to be as great for walking on, but you can kind of see, yeah. you know, how right. that, yeah. it'll just ro root into the ground at all those nodes. So if you're yeah. walking on one part of it, the rest of the plant will keep going. Yeah. And then when it blooms, it's a kind of an extra and it's yeah. nice for attracting some of the smaller butterflies. Right. The and they're sweet. Yeah, all right. But all right. not another one, another right. one to not put in a garden bed because yeah. it'll go berserk. And by the way, just want to remind you, you can get all these plants at the Lieber Johnson Native Plant Sale on April 12th and the 13th. Everybody loves succulents, and this is a, a glorious little sedum. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that cute? It's adorable. <laughs> those are a little sedum. They will seed out readily. They have a bright yellow flower. They're really uh -huh. great for filling in between other plants and in containers, so that's another nice one. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrea, as always, you, you've enticed us outside down low this time. <laughs> <laughs> On the down low so many with options. Andrea <laughs> from the Wildflower Center. <laughs> It's a new low for Central Texas <laughs> <laughs> A pleasure to see you. Thank you. Okay, coming up next, it's Daphne.